Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Tiffin Kariungi and we continue with our biology lesson and the topic is transport in plants and animals. So today I want us to look at absorption of water and mineral salts. Now, before we look at uh, how water and mineral salts are absorbed uh, within the plant, uh, it is important to ask ourselves, why is water necessary? Why is water necessary to plants? Now, one, uh, we find that uh, water is an important raw material in various processes that happen within the plant. And an example is a process such as photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is one of the processes that requires water as a raw material. Number two, uh, we can also say that uh, water is important because uh, it makes the cells to be turgid. And when the cells become turgid, uh, they maintain an upright posture which is very important for support. On the other hand, our water also plays a role in transportation. Transportation of nutrients, transportation of gases from one point to the other is done uh, by the water. Also, our water acts as a cooling effect. So for example, when plants experience intense heating, and they lose a lot of water during transpiration, there is a cooling effect that is created afterwards as the water evaporates from the surface of the leaves. So basically, those are some of the functions or those are some of the importance of water to a plant. So we look at uh, importance of water. And we have said the following, that one, water is an important raw material. In various biological processes. And you can give an example of Photosynthesis, hydrolysis, and so on and so forth. Number two, water makes the cells turgid which brings about support. Number three, water is a transport medium for gases, nutrients, and waste products. Number four, water creates a cooling effect as it is lost from plant surfaces or from the surface of the plant.
so basically there are very many functions of water in a in a plant but uh, we'll stop there now we are interested in how is water absorbed and how are the mineral salts absorbed so first of all we look at the absorption of water absorption of water and uh, we'll explain this by use of a diagram so of course water is absorbed by the root hair cells i think that one we learned when you we are talking about the structure of the root so it is important to show how does this water get into the root hair cell and how is it transported within the plant So we have a diagram, this is a root hair cell, these are other neighboring cells such as the cortical cells, as the cells of the cortex, we have the endodermis, and then finally we have the xylem. Uh, so what happens is, then of course we have the, the soil here. And of course this soil is the one that has water. What we call the soil water. Uh, what actually happens is uh, that... Uh, the soil water is dilute or is more dilute than the cell sap that is contained in the vacuole of the root hair cells. So in other words, we can say that uh, the soil water is hypotonic. It's dilute while the cell sap inside the vacuole is hypertonic. So as a result of that, there is a concentration gradient that exists and as a result of that water moves by osmosis from the soil across the wall or the thin walls of the root hairs into the vacuole and when the vacuole gains water it also becomes dilute so it becomes hypotonic as compared to the neighboring cells the cortex cells and so on and so forth so in the process that continues one area becomes diluted by the water and that creates an osmotic pressure that draws water to the neighboring cells so that process is continued until uh, the water gets to the endodermis and we say that the work of the endodermis is to control the amount of water uh, that is getting into the xylem. So this water will flow from one cell to the other by osmosis until it gets to the xylem. So when the water gets to the xylem of the root, so this is the xylem of the root, it is conducted upwards to the xylem of the stem and then finally to the xylem of the leaves. So basically this process entails absorption of water by osmosis. So just to explain uh, uh, that diagram, we can say that one, that's the explanation, is that the soil water 
that is the water that is in the soil, is hypotonic while the cell sap in the vacuole is hypertonic. So hypotonic means that it is dilute, hypertonic means that it is concentrated. So as a result of that, osmosis takes place drawing water into the vacuole of the root hair cells. The vacuole of the root hair cells. The cell sap becomes diluted or becomes more dilute compared to the neighboring cells. And because of that, osmosis continues through the neighboring cells the neighboring cortical cells to the endodermis and finally into the xylem. Into the xylem of the roots. And then, the water is then conducted to the xylem of the stem and later leaves. So basically, that is the process by which water is absorbed. So the process involved is osmosis, and this occurs because uh, the root hair, no, the soil water is hypotonic, while the cell sap of the root hair cells is hypertonic, and that's what draws water. And that process continues while diluting the cells, uh, making them hypotonic compared to the neighboring cells. So the process continues until the water gets to the xylem of the root. And when it gets to the xylem of the root, it is conducted upwards to the xylem of the stem. It's continuous until it gets to the xylem of the leaves and then to the leaves. So basically, that is what happens. Now, the other thing uh, is uh, the absorption of mineral salts. Absorption of mineral salts also follows the same, also follows the same, but the difference is uh, the processes that in, uh, that are the processes that are involved are not osmosis because osmosis is the movement of water, but for the mineral salts, uh, we can say that they are either absorbed by diffusion or active transport. If, for example, there is low concentration of mineral salts in the soil than in the cell sap of the root hairs, 
then the movement will be by active transport. But if the concentration in the soil is higher than in the cell sap, then the movement is by diffusion. Because you know that diffusion is from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. But if it is uh, from a lower concentration to a higher concentration, then it is going to be by active transport. So you can say, So diffusion occurs along a concentration gradient. And when the concentration in the soil is lower, the movement is by active transport. So otherwise, the channel is the same until also the mineral salts get to the xylem. But the only difference is that water is by osmosis, mineral salts is by a combination of diffusion and active transport. So we're going to stop there and have an assignment. So the first question, name the process by which plants absorb A, water, and B, mineral salts. And number two, explain the pathway of water absorption from the soil to the xylem of the root. So we are going to stop there until the next lesson. Goodbye.